A sharp pencil and an accurate layout allows for the transfer of dimensions from your drawings to your parts and so that allows joinery and profiles to be really well planned, uh, machines to be set accurately and cuts to be made. Safety is always important. I've got my uh, dust mask on here because I don't have any dust extraction set up to the drill press. And I'm just sanding this handle profile based on the drawings that I've done and making sure it fits to my hand before finishing it with marine grade varnish. Now I'm turning my attention to prototyping, gluing up a section of teak to test out a variety of joinery options for the inlay of the trigger mechanism and also a handle joint, a mortise and tenon handle joint that I'll be just testing out for uh, fit. So I've declamped that and just flattening it off before I put it through the thicknesser. This is to get it nice and flat so I've got a dimension accurate piece of timber to test out my joinery on as a prototype. So just chiseling that out and I actually did two different types, one with just the drill and the chisel and then also with the router. As an example of the different tools you can use to achieve the same result, students may not have access to a router. I didn't have a router table. Ideally, a router table would have been uh, a much better option for a lot of the processes here, just due to the safety and stability options that a table provides over a handheld router. However, I uh, took the time to get this prototype accurate so that I could transfer dimensions and procedures to my major project. Also, prototyped a variety of inlay options with some resin. I did this instead of abalone. After discovering abalone dust had the potential to be quite toxic, I wanted to avoid that. Cleaning up after regular work is important to maintain a safe workspace. You don't want to slip over. And in the very limited space that I do have, I need to be uh, paying attention to uh, safety and cleanliness, always wearing my earmuffs or uh, goggles, mask, etc., uh, and a respirator when mixing epoxy. This epoxy can let off some fumes, so I want it to be safe. I've got this steel bar taped up as a flat surface to clamp to, which worked incredibly well. Uh, my job came out really straight and really flat. However, the tape was a nightmare to get off. In hindsight, I should have researched uh, perhaps better quality tape. This was just painter's masking tape, which was a real challenge to get off. However, I did manage to get it off after the uh, after declamping, it took a little while to get it off and then I could put it through the thicknesser. Getting everything square and straight was imperative and this is something students need to pay special attention to. Keeping things straight, keeping things square, making sure your dimensions are accurate just allows for accurate work, accurate joinery and the transfer of dimensions. I'm still using this steel bar here as a straight reference guide and I've set up this jig with the router edge guide and I'm using the steel bar as my straight edge and had a test piece just to make sure that everything was going to be accurate I needed to make sure that this track was deadly straight it's the most important part of this build uh, any wobble any variation would be catastrophic ideally a router table would have been a better option if I'd had one uh, I would encourage a student to use one if they've got one it's safer you get less chance of wobble However, uh, this is what I had, and so I used the straight edge uh, steel to try and provide myself with a much firmer, straighter edge to work with to uh, mill out the shaft track and then also the trigger pocket. I then transferred the dimensions from my prototype using a piece of aluminium uh, to locate the pinholes. These pinholes were absolutely crucial to ensure that everything was aligned so that the locking mechanism for the trigger actually held the spear shaft uh, straight and would release it in a straight line. If this was even out by 0.1 of a millimetre, these pins wouldn't go through and that trigger mech may be located in the wrong position. The same for this top pin that locates the line release mechanism. Uh, I used a, the dimensions from my prototype to transfer over with a jig and got this locked into place. Once the spear shaft is locked in, that line release shouldn't move until the trigger underneath is released. And there you go. Moving on to the mortise and tenon joint for the handle, uh, replicating the method that I used on the prototype, I was satisfied with how that came up. And uh, you can see here, I've given the handle the UV stable varnish, which being in the ocean and being in the outdoors, it's important that that would not go yellow 
And so I, I opted for a marine grade spray varnish and gave that several coats so that that won't go yellow. It'll stay nice and clear, just highlighting the color of the timber. Again, demonstrating the use of the layout, being able to transfer dimensions and marking things out is a lot easier if you've done the hard work with the layout. Here I'm just shaping the front of that muzzle before taking the edges off with a trim router and sanding it up by hand. Again, using that metal uh, bar as a reference. And this looks absolutely stunning until this happened. I dug in with the router after changing my mind to come back and take those edges off. I should have done that before drilling that muzzle uh, hole. So I gathered up some sawdust, some teak dust and mixed it with epoxy to get the coloring right and had to shape that up by hand. Bit of an unfortunate mistake. However, I was happy enough with how I was able to repair it. Uh, again, in future, uh, an order of operations would have avoided this if I had planned to actually do that instead of making changes on the run, I may have avoided that mistake. Here I'm just putting final touches to the line release here to uh, hold the spear in place when it's under load and back to inserting a few more stainless steel parts onto the gun, routing out pockets and just making sure everything's accurate and flush. Trimming some copper pipe and mixing up my pearl powdered epoxy for the inlay. Again, because the abalone dust was going to be toxic, I opted for this method. I also wanted to put a brass pin through the mortise and tenon joint of the handle for extra reinforcement, just to make it a little bit stronger and also to give it a, a little bit of pop with that brass pin coming through. Boiling it up once finished with the teak oil, really happy with those inlays and how straight that track was and how accurate that pocket was for the mechanism. This rubber loading pad you can see doesn't quite fit perfectly. It was actually the wrong size for my gun and I had to grind that to fit with a sanding wheel on a Dremel tool, which was quite difficult. If you've ever tried to sand rubber, it's an extremely difficult job to do. I was happy with how I got it to fit, but again, that's why it looks a little bit off on the joinery there. Uh, other than the major blunder with the router, there was no other mistakes on this that I was able to identify or need a repairing. I was quite happy with the way the inlays came out and I was extremely happy with the accuracy of that trigger pocket, which the trigger pocket and the shaft track are the most crucial aspects of this build to ensure that everything actually shoots straight and releases properly. The teak itself is expensive, but I think well worth it because of its natural oil qualities and buoyancy. Uh, you can buy cheaper timber, but I think the, the value of the teak is worth it in this uh, final result.